The woman you see in this footage has just committed the most horrifying crime that would leave the community and an entire country reeling with shock. This is beyond shock. It, it's, it's got me shaking just thinking about it, that something like this could happen. But what led her to do something so evil? Let's look into the case of the six-year-old that was murdered and dropped on a mom's yard. On Tuesday, April 25th, 2023, at around 9.45 p.m., a man by the name of Michael Fontenelle arrived at his home in Heron, Louisiana, where he lived with his long-term girlfriend, 43-year-old Hannah Landon, and his two daughters. He had been working late that day and was exhausted, so he just went straight to bed. The next morning, he woke up around 7 a.m. and decided to go check on his daughters before going to work. His older seven-year-old daughter was sleeping peacefully in her bed, but her younger sister, Bella, was not there. Where could she have gone so early in the morning? Did she even sleep at home that night? The girl's bed was still made, meaning that she hadn't slept there. Maybe she even hadn't come home at all from school the previous day. The first thought that crossed Michael's mind was that his ex-wife and the mother of his daughters, Jennifer Zeladin, had taken Bella. Jennifer lived a couple of blocks away from them, and the two had custody wrangles over the years that had even involved the police. So it was not surprising that she would want to keep his daughter away from him. But before jumping into any conclusion, Michael wanted to check with his live-in girlfriend, Hannah, to see if his daughter came home the previous day. Michael and Hannah had been together for quite some time, and although they were not married, she was like his daughter's stepmother and seemed to really care about them. This picture shows Hannah holding Bella, and they both seem very happy. This one shows Hannah and Bella dressed like princesses, and they appear to have a really good relationship. This morning, however, Michael realized that he had also not seen Hannah, and she didn't come home last night. So where was she? Was she with Bella? Worried that something bad might have happened to both his girlfriend and his little girl, Michael went to Heron Police Department and reported them missing, but nothing could have prepared him for the horror that was about to unfold. The police arrived at Michael's home at around 7.45 a.m., and after interviewing Michael and the remaining daughter, they went over to Bella's mother's home to see if she knew anything about her missing daughter and stepmom. Jennifer and Hannah didn't really like each other and had made it clear over the years that they would never get along. So when the police went to Jennifer's house, they suspected she might know something about the whereabouts of her daughter and Hannah. They arrived at the house at around 8.20 a.m., and the first thing they noticed was a large plastic bucket bucket conspicuously sitting on the front lawn of the house. The bucket was suspicious enough to make the police want to know what was in it. And as they carefully approached it and opened the lid, they gasped in horror at what they saw. It's a chlorine bucket, large, you know, a little, little larger than a five gallon bucket on the front lawn of the mother's house. Uh, when they opened up that bucket, they found the 60 year old deceased inside that bucket. Bella's little body was inside the 10 gallon bucket, curled up in a fetal position. Immediately, the entire area was sealed off as a crime scene and the missing persons case turned into a homicide investigation. We're a small town, uh, we're a safe town, and I just want the citizens to know that my heart and my prayers go out to the family of this child. A sickening crime, six-year-old Bella Fontanelle killed and st in a 10 gallon chlorine bucket. This is a senseless type incident that happened. An autopsy later revealed that Bella had been beaten and choked to death. Uh, our preliminary cause of death, as determined by the forensic pathologist, is um, manual strength along with multiple uh, blood force in to the head. You know, child deaths are always terrible, especially ones like this that should not have happened. The grim discovery shook the entire community and left the family completely devastated. What kind of evil monster would do such a horrible thing to an innocent little girl? And why dump her outside her mom's house? Clearly only a sick person would be capable of doing something so cruel and so twisted. We ended up doing extensive interviews with both the mother and the father, uh, the biological mother and the father. We do not believe uh, that they are involved in the uh, any foul play. We never had anything like this happen before. 
that's for sure. Bella's family described the murder as a senseless and heinous act, saying that it had destroyed their lives. Her aunt, Bianca Cano, set up a GoFundMe page where she shared a heartbreaking message describing her young niece as an amazing little soul who was taken away too soon. No words can describe the pain that is running through our bodies. It is truly inhumane. The world is so unjust. You were given to us for six amazing years. You were beyond perfection. Your beautiful little voice, your funny personality, the way you danced, the way you were so delicate and fragile, your smile, your laugh, the way you expressed yourself. I can go on and on and on about how amazing this little soul was. No person should ever have to go through what we are going through, much less a mother and father having to lay to rest a child. Neighbors described Bella as a sweet and friendly little girl who was often seen riding her bike around the neighborhood or playing with her older sister. I would see the little girl and her older sister out in the driveway playing many times, riding their little bikes and the mother would sit out there with them. Uh, the grandmother and grandfather would sit out there with them. And it was just so beautiful to watch them. Bella was a kindergartner at St. Matthew the Apostle School. And following the gruesome discovery, the school canceled their classes for the rest of the week to give students time to mourn their friend. Bella was reportedly set to be honored at City Hall for her achievement in track before she was killed. Bella's funeral was held on April 29th, 2023 and was attended by hundreds of people, including the 510 students at St. Matthew Elementary School. Parents with children who also attend the school say they're grieving with the family. My son um, was with me. He goes to St. Matthew and I mean, she was on the same playground as he plays on. We are in the same carpool line and she's just not there anymore. Many say they're still processing this tragedy. It was unbelievable, it was so heart-wrenching, just hard to believe that we were sitting there for that reason. It was very difficult uh, looking at the parents and the, and the little sister. Um, she was taking it very, very hard. While this was going on, investigators were still trying to figure out what happened to Bella. Who did this to her? And where was the father's girlfriend, Hannah? Our attention was drawn very quickly to the missing girlfriend who is now um, missing in action, right? We could not necessarily find her. Could Hannah have been involved in the little girl's murder? Or was she also a victim of some psychotic killer on the loose? Investigators were able to track down Hannah to a local hospital where she was reportedly undergoing a mental evaluation. Apparently, she had shown up at the police headquarters around midnight, looking disoriented and asking for help. Officer spoke to her. She seemed a little bit out of it, and uh, they called to have her. She was asking for a transport, so they called for an ambulance to come pick her up. And once the ambulance came and picked her up, they transported her to a local hospital be evaluated. While still at the hospital, investigators started looking into Hannah's background, and what they found was pretty disturbing. As I said earlier, Hannah and Bella's mom, Jennifer, were not really friends, but the extent of their disputes was much deeper than just a mere rivalry. In 2021, Hannah, who also went by the name of Bunak Lim, had reportedly filed for a restraining order against Jennifer and her sister, Evelyn, claiming that they had a her on multiple occasions and threatened to harm her. In one incident on March 17th, 2021, Hannah and Jennifer got into a physical fight at a children's swim meet. According to reports, Hannah was holding Bella and Jennifer came over and wanted to take the child, but Hannah wouldn't let her because she said it was Michael's weekend with the children. However, Jennifer was Bella's biological mother, so she felt she had the right to take her baby. This silly argument quickly escalated and turned physical before Michael finally intervened. Later, while he was giving a statement to the police, he supported Hannah and was even her witness. In another incident on June 8, 2021, Jennifer and Hannah got into another physical altercation at one of Bella's soccer games. Hannah claimed in the restraining order request that Jennifer grabbed her from behind and aggressively pulled and shoved her while threatening to harm her. However, the judge could not find enough evidence to warrant a restraining order, so it was ultimately thrown out. Now, while Hannah may have wanted 
wanted to appear like the victim, in both of these incidents, she was far from it. According to a police report, Hannah was arrested one time after she attacked Jennifer's sister, Evelyn. Evelyn told the police that Hannah would not allow Jennifer to see and hug her daughter because it was Michael's custody day. Eventually, Michael did allow Jennifer to hug Bella for just one minute, but then Hannah took out a cell phone and began recording it. Evelyn said that she put her hand up to try and block Hannah from recording the private moment between mother and daughter, but Hannah reportedly slapped her hand away. The two then got into a physical fight with Hannah allegedly pulling Evelyn's hair and scratching her face. This is what the police report says. Bunak grabbed Evelyn's hair and began attacking her. Evelyn then grabbed Bunak's hair and repeatedly told Bunak to let go. Bunak did not let Evelyn go until an unknown bystander intervened. The report said that Evelyn had visible scratches below her left eye and over her left hand. And when officers tried to interview Hannah, they described her as being extremely uncooperative and that she claimed that she was attacked unprovoked. Michael reportedly told the officers that he did not witness the incident and so was unable to provide a statement or corroborate Hannah's account. Now, what is really sad about this case is that it is clear that Hannah had no issues with Bella. She even appears to love and care for this little girl, but it seems like her hatred for Jennifer was much stronger than her love for Bella. And heartbreakingly, Bella was the one that ended up paying the ultimate price for something she knew nothing about. Father's girlfriend, Hannah Landon, also known as Bunak Lim and Bunak Landon, was found at a local hospital and placed into JPSO custody Wednesday afternoon. She'll be booked with first degree murder and obstruction of justice. Investigators believe that Hannah choked and beat the little girl to death at the dad's house and then stepped her into the 10 gallon bucket before dragging it on a wagon for half a mile and dumping it on Bella's mom's lawn. Can you imagine just how cold and calculating one has to be to do that? During the investigation, detectives were able to obtain this chilling surveillance footage that collaborated with this account. And I've got to warn you guys, this footage is pretty disturbing to watch. At around 9.35 p.m. on April 25th, Hannah can be seen there pulling a wagon with the chlorine bucket in which Bella's remains were found. She was wearing knee-high white boots and is walking calmly towards Bella's mom's house. She doesn't even seem to phased when a car passes before her. Someone pointed out the casual way Hannah was walking down the street and it is simply horrifying. To know that she was pulling a little girl stuffed into a bucket makes you physically ill. This is beyond shock. It, it's, it's got me shaking just thinking about it, that something like this could happen. We've got a lot of different evidence with a lot of different scenes here, um, you know, that we'll, we'll continue to work through. But of course we have an arrest and we have a, more tragically the, the death of the, the six year old, which is gonna be a, a big shock to the small community of Harahan. Hannah is currently on suicide watch in the Jefferson Parish Correctional Center and facing first degree murder charges along with obstruction of justice. If found guilty of the charges, she'll likely face the death penalty. We're gonna work to the in to try to make sure we get a, a conviction. This is a small baby and any family would be devastated. I can only imagine what the mother and father is going through right now. What do you think was Hannah's motive for killing Bella? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.